Hey everyone, I'm Ultima456, you're the Ultimates, and welcome to episode 15 of Let's Platinum Danganronpa 1, 2, Reload. Sayaka, she had the kitchen knife? We already said that the attack started with... The person with the knife attacked first, and the sword was used as an impromptu defense. And the one who attacked first was... Sayaka? Now do you understand? She wasn't a blameless victim in this. No, far from it. It's almost as if... She'd been planning to commit a murder of her own. What? She took the knife from the kitchen, then invited the culprit to the room she was staying in. And if it's true that she had the kitchen knife and attacked without provocation... Indeed. These are all the actions of an assailant. Which brings up another point. Nakoto, Sayaka was the one who suggested you two switch rooms, correct? Maybe the reason she wanted to switch rooms was so that she could pin the crime on you. That is a possibility, is it not? Sayaka wanted to... on me? That's one way to put it. <laughs> that would also explain why she would switch the nameplates. She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Makoto's room where she was staying. And by committing the murder there, instead of her room, that would implicate Makoto. But for that to work, the target had to be lured out while still keeping the room swap a secret. If the target knew she had switched rooms, they would have become suspicious right away. So all that's why she switched the names? But doesn't that plan seem a little risky? For one thing, even if her plan worked, Mr. Naegi would just tell everyone they'd switched rooms. I don't know. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. I'm sure Sayaka realized the same thing, which is why, out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. Plus, she was the ultimate pop sensation. A totally forgettable kid. Or a national superstar. Who are you more likely to believe? Wait, then... You're saying she had this all planned out? Holy shit! But in the end, her plan backfired. She launched her attack with the knife then found herself under attack in turn. That must be when her wrist got broken, and she was forced to drop the knife. The tables were suddenly turned on her, and she died at the hands of the one she'd planned to murder. Just hold on! That can't be true! Because... because... Hey! Hey! You guys have totally derailed the argument! You're being super boring right now. Come on, hurry up and decide who did it. Wouldn't it be awful if I had to punish you all just because you ran out of time? Oh, yeah, we gotta decide who we think did it. Makoto, right now you just need to concentrate on figuring out the answer to this mystery. If we can't uncover who murdered Sayaka, it's over for all of us. Is it? Is it really all over? Obviously I'm committed to finding out who the ki who killed her, but what can I do? I mean, as far as clues go, there's nothing left. Or is there? Can I just say that uh, this first crime is really brilliant. It's incredibly well done. And Sayaka to say, hey, to some... is an absolute genius. Even though she didn't come out on top and she, she was killed, Everything that they've said, she had this planned for a really long time and it almost worked. It's crazy. All right. So we have no more clues. Actually, there's one more clue. The dying message. We still never worked out what that had to do with anything. So let's figure it out. I do did it. But there just aren't any more clues, right? Oh, there's one more clue, Leon. No, that's wrong. A dying message. There still might be one clue left. Sayaka's dying message. Dining? Wait, wh what did you say? <laughs> dining? The dying message. She wrote something on the wall behind her, remember? You know, even even just that line there, like, even, even the fact that Leon mistook what Makoto said, uh, the word dying for dining, is such a human thing to do. We always, humans misunderstand each other, like, 90% of the time. It's, okay, 50% of the time. I, and to put that into like a 
script without the nest the, without the necessity for it is incredible like the forethought that would have had to go into that let's let's make it so that like Leon misunderstood what he said just now, just for fun, just for random, like, just because that's what would happen. That is incredibly intelligent. So even something as small as that is really, really clever. The dying message. She wrote something on the wall behind her, remember? One, one, zero, three, seven. Written in her own blood. There must be a clue about the killer hidden in there. Well, before we get too far into that, I need to ask, can we really be sure that Sayaka is the one who wrote it? There's no question that Sayaka wrote that message, and I can prove it. Her left index finger was the only one that had blood on it. I got it! it was the only thing that had Her blood on it. Her left index finger had blood on it. That could only be because she used that finger to write the message. I see. She broke her right wrist during the fight, so she'd have to use her left hand to write. Sure. I think we can all agree Sayaka wrote it. But still, what the heck do those numbers mean? Hey, Chihiro, you're a computer nerd or whatever, right? You should know all about numbers and shit. N no, that's not... <laughs> yes, I'm a programmer, but oh, I don't see any kind of meaning in these numbers. Of course. It's because they're not numbers. Ugh, I don't like the way Kyoko said, said that. She knew from the very beginning who the culprit was, and that, of course, makes it sound like she only just figured it out. Oh. It looks like... Huh? What? What? No, it's just... A look at the numbers, assuming they're not numbers. Don't these first two, 1-1, one, one, look less like two numbers and more like one letter? Figured it out yet, everybody? Ah, oh, you're right. The connecting line is barely there, so I assumed it was 1-1, one, one, but... Looking at it now, you could also read it as an N. Whoa, you might have finally just said something worth a shit. <laughs> Our little gray cells are really getting excited now. But even if that really <laughs> is an N, N037, doesn't make any more sense than before. Damn it, it's no use. I just don't know. Rotate the image 180 degrees. Huh? Rotate it? I... I think maybe, maybe I see something. Oh my god. Now I see. She wrote down the killer's name. Huh? You just shot past the clue part and right on to who did it. So, whose name did she write? Sayaka's dying message reveals the real killer's name. And the one who killed her is Here's you. My answer. Leon Kuwata. Solving this mystery was simply to rotate the writing 180 degrees. If you turn the message around, it becomes the letters L E O N. So, if there was any doubt that Sayaka was an absolute genius, <laughs> who sadly got unlucky <laughs> L -E -O -N. in, funnily enough, the lucky student's room. And with her last ounce of strength, about? she told it's us the answer from the very beginning. It's just a bunch of random squiggles that happen to look like my name. Look no, at the design of his character now, it's so cool. She wrote that message on the wall behind her as she was leaning up against it. In that position, she couldn't move to write normally, and had to write upside down as it were. And as a result... When you look at it standing in front of her, it ends up getting flipped. Try it for yourself if you want. <laughs> Write something sitting like her, and the letters will be inverted. Okay, everyone, come on. Find a wall, get some get some paint on your finger, and try and write it. <laughs> now nah, just pretend, yeah, and that you can like tell that it does work. Stretch to me. I'm the killer. You can't just go and say shit like that. I like how like he's, just his animation here. It's like everything's like so. Um, hard penciled, like with the hard lines, like uh, that black on all his hair. It's really cool. If you're not the killer, then why did you try to destroy the evidence? Huh? So now... You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The evidence Leon tried to get rid of? The evidence Leon tried to get rid of. I know what it was. And we all do too. The burnt shirt piece. If you look at his clothing, that's exactly the... 
the burnt shirt piece I found laying on the ground by the incinerator, right? It's the cuffs that he has on his shirt. As the killer stabbed Sayaka, they must have gotten some of her blood on them. And to dispose of the shirt covered in the victim's blood, they threw it into the incinerator. But one piece burned off and got left behind. And the killer didn't notice. If they had, they most certainly would have panicked. Isn't that right, Leon? What? What? But is one scrap of fabric enough to conclude that Leon is guilty? Yeah, I mean, Leon's not the only one wearing a white button-up. That, that's right! There are plenty of other people here with shirts like mine. With just that one little charred piece, there's no way you can say for sure who it belongs to. You're right. That alone isn't enough. But there are some other points that may reveal the truth. Are you finally starting to understand? The answers to all the riddles are right here. Yeah, see, now it's saying, now it's making it seem like she knew everything from the very beginning, but the of course was wrongly inflected. Yeah, I think so. The burnt remains of the button up shirt, which the killer wasn't able to get rid of. There's something about it we need to pay attention to in order to figure out who's responsible. And the answer is how it was disposed of. Not when or where. How the shirt was disposed of. We should be able to figure out who the killer is. It's kind of, this is not as logical a way to figure it out, or that, that sentence is not super, super logical with the way it's written, but it gets easier and better. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good point. I, I think I know what you're going to say. You can't reach the incinerator without opening the gate in front of the trash room, right? And obviously, you wouldn't be able to hit the switch to turn it on either. You need the key to get in, and the one with the key was the person on cleaning duty. So the killer had to be whoever was in charge of taking care of the trash, right? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's wrong. There was another way to use the incinerator without being the one on cleaning duty. And that's exactly what proves that Leon is the real killer. Let's figure it out, ladies and gentlemen. There's only one thing here that proves that it was him. And that the key to the trash room is the shattered crystal ball. Whoever was on cleaning duty must have had it, right? So the only one who could get to the incinerator was the person in charge of the trash? And you'd have to get close to the incinerator. Nope. No, that's wrong. There is one person who could have. And that was Leo. Hold on. I think I know how someone could dispose of the evidence without using the trash room key. But if you can't get past the gate, you couldn't possibly turn on the incinerator, could you? Yes, you could, if you used this. What is it, some kind of glass ball? It's busted to hell. Actually, it was supposed to be a crystal ball, but... Uh... But how would you use it? Killer had to use the glass ball in a certain way, which was... Throw it. I got it! The killer simply took aim at the incinerator switch and threw the ball through a gap in the gate. All they had to do was hit that switch and the incinerator would come to life. Someone threw that through a gap in the gate? Remember what you said before, Hifumi? Huh? Someone turned the incinerator on. Very strange, I'm quite certain it was off last time I was down here. Perhaps it was the work of a fairy. Hifumi had the key, so the only way the incinerator could have been turned on without his knowledge was because the killer was able to hit the switch without opening the gate. Once they'd gotten the incinerator going, all they had to do was ball up the shirt and toss it in. Hey, come on! What the hell is this? All you have to do is look at the scene to know that the killer never actually went inside the trash room. The shards of broken glass, the incinerator left running, the piece of shirt that escaped the fire. If the killer had been on cleaning duty, the evidence would have been taken care of much more thoroughly. Wait, wait, no, just hold on. But the distance from the gate to the incinerator has to be at least 30 feet, right? The pinpoint accuracy you'd need to throw a glass ball that far and hit something that small. Could someone really do that? That, that's right. There's no way. It'd be impossible. Difficult, absolutely. Impossible? I don't think so. 
because the killer is it wouldn't have been much of a challenge at all for the killer because he's the ultimate baseball oh star because the killer is the ultimate baseball star isn't that right leon now just quickly they're gonna actually show like there's more there's we're almost done they're gonna show a few scenes the throwing of the gas ball at the switch makes quite a bit of sense the way that he actually got rid of the shirt, I feel like is a little more like, could that really be possible? It probably could, but only just barely, but I'll, I'll sort of show it when, when they actually uh, show the picture. Do you, do you have any idea how stupid you sound right now? A target 30 feet away would surely be little challenge for the ultimate baseball star. You, you, you can't be serious. I, I, I'm not the killer. These goddamn shipper brains have got it all wrong, I'm telling you! You still won't admit it? Okay then. Makoto, go ahead and review the incident one more time to make his crime perfectly clear. And with that, we can end this. Listen to me! What the hell do you mean, end this? Say what you want, Leon. But all the questions have been answered. And the truth has been revealed. Now here's what happened. The closing argument is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? All right. Every case has one last element to bring the class trial to an end. This is the closing argument. In this phase, you'll, uh, you'll give a complete summary of the case. You'll have to re reproduce the flow of events for the case in the form of a comic book. However, you'll notice that in the comic, there are a number of pieces missing. It's up to you to complete the comic using the provided truth panels. Also, if you take aim at a missing section and press the X button, Holy cow, you'll get a hint that might lead to a breakthrough. Well then, good luck and have fun. All right, this is actually, like, it's fun, but it can be really tough. So let's see what we can do. So let's have a look at our options here. So the very first thing that happened was Leon came to Sayaka's room. He entered the room, Sayaka's ready to attack. Leon, I don't know, like, gestures. Sayaka comes out and swipes. Now, another thing is... Um, comic books, well, I guess Japanese comic books, um, are read from right to left, so it goes like that, and then I guess top to bottom, I think? Yeah, it must be top to bottom. I think. Yeah, top to bottom. So then she attacked. Now, um, she attacked, but she missed. Uh, what ended up happening there? Let me have a look. Oh, so she missed, and as she missed, he backed up into the replica sword. Then, um, he noticed that he had the replica sword behind him, so he used it to defend himself, which is what got the uh, scratch marks on the actual um, sheath of the, of the sword. Um, then he used the sword, swung at Sayaka, hit her in the wrist, the, uh, the knife fell out of her hand, and... Wait a second... Yeah, so here she's already injured in the corner, and he's holding the knife, uh, he's holding the sword, um, ready. Uh, then she manages to get into the bathroom. Um, Leon's like, how do I get in there? He, sh like, shakes the doorknob, can't get in, she's hiding there, worried about the, um, worried about the door. Uh, he goes and gets the screwdriver, um, from his room, actually. He literally leaves the scene of the crime goes to get the screwdriver and then uh, unlocks the door by removing the doorknob. He goes in with the knife, sees Saika, stabs her. Um, let me just make sure, sorry. Yep. Then she he doesn't notice, but Saika's writing his name with her blood. She's still alive. Like, looking one last look, one last look. Now she's dead. In Act 3, he comes out of the bathroom and he starts using the lint roller to get rid of all the hair out of the room. Roll, 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 roll. He gets the incinerator in Act 4, and he holds the glass ball. He does his little <laughs> throw, smash straight into the uh, thing. Turns the incinerator on, then balls up his bloody shirt, and uh, let me see, I think it's this one here. Yeah, rolled up shirt flying to the incinerator. See, like I said, the it's a little like through the through the gap. I can see the ball like working because it just has to go straight. But the the shirt kind of has to. It can't really go straight. It's got to be thrown like from up here. So 
It's possible, but it's just still really unlikely. Um, and then finally, he walks away, um, the shirt is burning, and it burns the final piece. And that's everything that happened. Uh, now the only thing is this is going to take a while, so I'm going to pause here, and we're going to see this, um, the conclusion of this class trial next time. So I want to thank you all for watching episode 15 of Let's Platinum Dung and Romper 1-2 Reload. My name is Ultima456, you're the Ultimates, and I'll see you next time.